Griddle Master. Cooking up the good stuff. Hey, Griddle Master Joe here. Today we are going to smoke a turkey. <laughs> it, this is Sunday, and this coming Thursday is going to be Thanksgiving. So I wish I would have got the video out sooner, but just a couple weeks ago I tried smoking on a griddle top, on a griddle master griddle top. Because the way we our griddle tops are at griddle master, we have heat that can escape from the left and the right side. So therefore, we can utilize that heat for a lot of things like uh, baking, a convection oven, um, etc. But today we are going to smoke a turkey um, and see how that turns out. So um, a lot of you ask how does my top look. I have not touched my top. I simply opened up. I have not cooked. Um, unfortunately I've been really really busy um, and I have not cooked in over a month and this is the first time I have opened. Well actually yeah like I said um, it was probably three Three weeks ago, I have not done anything for three weeks, and this is when I opened up my uh, top. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the the gas on, and I'm going to heat up. I'm going to put the four on. I'm, I only need half because my grill's so big. And I'm only doing like a 12 pound um, turkey. So let me take some aluminum foil. The first thing I want to do, there's a lot to cover. So this is going to be a pretty in-depth recording. I'm going to go ahead and just take the aluminum foil and I'm going to set it right down on here. Uh, reason being, and I don't know what the big deal or if there's a big deal or not, but I'm going to try to keep the smoke flavor from penetrating our season top, okay? Not that it's a big deal, but I don't want to do eggs in, uh, next week and, and taste that smoky flavor. Maybe some of you do. I, I don't know. Um, but let's see. I have a lot going on in my mind, so bear with me. We are going to use a cooling rack and a couple of bricks and the cooling rack. So this is where our smoke is going to generate. We are going to Use the handle it, the all famous handle it, to cover part of it, to cover the top, and we are going to put our chips. I have hickory, and I have, oh, I knew I was going to forget. Um, Wow. What was the other one I used? I have them in the kitchen. I'll let you know in a little bit. But I have I have two. I have two flavors. And I'm just going to set those down right on here. All right. So we're set here. We're set here with our cooling rack. This is where our turkey's going to go, and our turkey's going to go inside of because of the juices. Now, I know this looks small. You may need to go bigger. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this here. If you look, it's already starting to smoke some, which is great. I'm going to cut the bird open over here and show you what I do to get a incredible tasty even if you're just doing it on the oven in your oven 
What I'm about to do, this first step is phenomenal. I'll have you know. I'm going to do it on the tray just so all the juices will stay within this tray. Okay, cut this bad boy open. And not our hand. I use a butter ball. I, uh, I just like them better. Free advertisement. Let's take out the neck. Got the neck. Pull out the innards. Got those out of there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I have some rosemary. Just breaking up a little. I have melted butter. I'm going to drop the rosemary, half of it in there. It's about, it's about uh, two tablespoons. Garlic powder, the whole thing, about a tablespoon of garlic powder. Ground, or uh, some chopped up garlic. Um, probably, I like a lot of garlic, so I probably put five or six cloves um, just in what I'm mixing here, and then I have another three for later. Um, this is a special, like a Cajun. Um, it's a special spice that I get um, from Chef Paul. Um, blackened um, poultry magic, and I do a blackened steak magic. So I'm putting that on here, all of it. And I'm going to mix it with this melted butter. Okay. Now, now the fun part. We are going to take right about here and pinch right above the leg. We're going to cut a hole. Ah, and I usually have a spoon, but I'm going to dump this into that hole. I'm going to take my two fingers and loosen the skin up around and get that butter all around, all the way up in the cavity here. If you will do this for your turkey, even if you're doing it in the oven, hi carumba. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Griddlebaster heard me about the spoon. Nah, I'm making it work. Thanks. She's a great help. Every holiday. She's so wonderful. She lets me do all the cooking. But, uh, but no, she's, uh, she does all the cleaning up, which I don't like doing. So, to me, that's a great, that's great teamwork. So I'm doing this other side, getting that all, all in there, and on the outside, it's okay. All right, now I'm going to pinch just a little bit of the top of the, of the leg itself. Be careful. Please don't cut yourself. And again, I'll do it over here as well. Just a, a hole, probably about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Up here is a little bigger, obviously. And I'll cram that in there. Now, if you don't loosen the skin around, all it's going to do is boil out. But by moving my finger around and separating it from the meat, 
it's allowing the room for all this butter and seasoning to cook into the meat. If I just left it out, you'd have a great taste in uh, skin, but it wouldn't penetrate. It wouldn't penetrate the, the meat, and now it's going to actually allow the smoke to get in here as well. Okay, so now I have delicious tasting hands. Um, before I go ahead and dry those off, I am going to take a little bit and coat the turkey. It's so weird to me because, there we go, because I've al I always do stuffing. And actually this year I had the idea I wanted to put stuffing inside the skin cavity here on both sides all around to act as an insulator of the juices and and whatnot. But um, I'm smoking the turkey on a griddle top. So I'm going to set this right in there. Look at that. That's beautiful. B-E-A-U-T-Full. All right. Now, I'm going to throw in some apples. And I'm just doing this again before I, I clean my hands real good. I'll just get all this good stuff in here. Some onions. I wanted to take some of this garlic and just, just put it on top and in here. A little bit of rosemary, again, just on top. What I did not bring out yet is my basting brush. And I am going to dump the rest of this in here. And I'm going to poke it all the way through. I want to leave room up top here so the smoke could actually penetrate and get in there because obviously this is where the meat is, the most of the meat. Alright, we're good. And there's one other special product that we're going to dump in. And I know you guys have heard of it being done, but probably have not ever tried it. And that makes two of us. Okay? And that is Ho 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 Coca Cola. Never done it before, folks. Never, never have done this before. And we're going to dump that right in the cavity here. The whole can and a half. So that was one, and I should have brought some ice, because it's just room temperature. You don't want cold. And a half. Good enough. Now comes our creative part, depending on what you have. Maybe some of you just have a, uh, a cover that comes down, but even if you do, we have to be careful of the temperature. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to stick this in. I'll stick it in the, the thick part. Okay, so that's reading the breast temperature. And then over here, this part is reading the actual uh, oven temperature. So now, if I turn this on now, start. Okay. It's showing we have an internal temperature. The food is 61 degrees. The outside temperature here is 92. So if I were to take this and put this over top, obviously there is um, more space that I need to cover. 
So what we're going to do, we have to keep we have to keep the the oven temperature anywhere from uh, 225. I'm going to go ahead and fold this to make it a little thicker. Anywhere from 225 to uh, 250. So I'm building a wall. Okay. I'm building a wall around. And right now I still have my... my uh, My temperature, my, uh, all of my fires are, are set to high right now, but that's going to be coming down. I just, I just left them on high so we could get our wood chips um, to start heating up real well. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. This is really not a big deal. It's better than having a smoker that you have to have at home um, and keep stored because I know some of you out there smoke a lot. Um, but if you only want it every once in a while, this is a great way to smoke something and then be done not have to have a smoker laying around. Boom. So, whoo, that was hot. So there's our wall. Okay, and you see the smoke already coming out. Beautiful. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna close up. Close this in. And that's it. Now we wait. When we want to add more chips, we lift, we're going to lift the top off. We're going to open up right here, and we are going to add more chips and let it continue to smoke. And every hour, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to suck the juices that are coming from the bird for, that are down, and I'm going to baste it. I'm going to baste it all over the, the turkey. We're going to constantly be filling the turkey with juices. Um, Let's see how it goes. I did smoke a brisket and two turkey legs, like I said, three, I think it's three weeks ago, maybe a little, maybe a little more, time flies. And at the end of it, I found the proper solution. So um, here we go, we're at, our oven temperature right now is at 111, and our food temperature is at 61. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here and that way I think the top camera can see it as well. And uh, we'll go from there. Um, probably in a little bit more. The smoke is going to get more and more intense. And we'll go from there. What i got to just look for is that this temperature doesn't go past 220 uh, or 250. I want to keep it between 225 and 250. All right, and we're gonna and we're gonna get the uh, internal temperature to 165 to 170. Uh, everything that I've heard about smoking turkeys is if you let it go to 180, um, it might be a little too dried out. So we'll go 165, 170, and, and right in that ballpark. And I don't know if I voiced it, but this was a I think it's a 12 pound turkey. I don't know what I did with the, uh, oh here it is. This is a 11.87, 12 pound turkey. All right, all right, we'll check back in a little while.
So I just wanted to check back in with you all to let you know, to see the smoke that's now coming out. It's only been probably 10 minutes um, since I, I stepped away. Um, I saw the temperature, we're now at 150, 160, um, and an internal temperature of 71. Again, this is going to be, I don't know, I don't know, this is probably going to be a, a 8 to 10 hour ordeal, typically, uh, for a turkey because it's so big. If you're just doing chicken legs and, and uh, some salmon, smoked salmon, it would go a lot faster just within a few hours. Now another thing that you can do, um, really, if you smoke the turkey for only like three hours, everything that, that I've heard, that I've read about, is that smoking after the first couple, three hours, that's all the smoke that's gonna penetrate. So you could literally, if you wanted to, you could take the turkey and go finish it off in the oven. But I'm not going to do that. I want to do the whole thing out on the griddle, griddle master griddle top, and, uh, and, and enjoy that and see how that turns out. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I want to try to get this video online for you guys as fast as possible. So um, I did want to share one thing. I opened up the side a little bit because I didn't feel like the temperature was getting to what uh, my liking uh, internal temperature because it wasn't raising fast enough not that it has to go from from 100 to 225 but I don't know that it was going to get to 225 to 250 um, just by the heat coming through the grates I mean obviously eventually it probably would but I opened up if you look over here with this camera I opened up and now I have so the heat's coming up here but some of it's going inside so that's adding good air circulation as well, um, like a convection oven. So you see the smoke, the smoke is oozing out. Um, probably, like I said, um, I figure in an hour total time, I'm going to open it up and I am going to put more uh, wood chips in there. And, and you know, that's something that you could do when you go to build your wall. If you build it where now you just have a little, a little bit here that you could, you could have the aluminum foil to pop off, so you could access your wood chips. I did it so I, I'm going to access them from here. Not too smart. Not not did it didn't think that through. My bad. But uh, anyway, maybe I'll maybe when I go to open it up, I'll realign everything and do that. All I got to do is set the aluminum off to the side for about a minute, it'll cool off where I can touch it and, uh, and then reseed it all like what I'm talking about. And we'll baste it at that time. Alright, so we're now at 169. So we've already jumped about 10 degrees and uh, on the internal, so we're, we're closer to that 225 uh, mark that we want to be at. Right, so Joe, back with you. Wow, look at all this smoke coming out. That's the ticket on a griddle master griddle top. Um, our temperature, just want to get this, our temperature is at 226 internal and our turkey is at 124 and we want to go to 165, 170. So, the smoke is coming out really good. I am going to go ahead and open it up. In fact, I'll go ahead and take this off. I'm going to open it up and baste it. I'm doing is sucking some of the juices. Okay. 
how our wood chips are doing. Let me get my tongs. Move them around. Okay, we'll close her back up. And that's it. Okay, Griddle Master Joe, back with you. Um, you saw me take off the wrapping. Uh, let's see. I'm showing about five hours, only five hours. And um, here, let me turn it this way for you. The, uh, the food temperature is 167. So the thick part of the breast here is at 167. So remember I wanted to be at 160 to 170, so we're there, um, it worked perfectly, five hours, and, and I kept, I kept the temperature around 220 to 240 in that, in that vicinity, consistently between that temperature, very easy to do, and as you, as you see, I'm going to go ahead and take couple of rags here so I can hold this and I'm going to move it off so you can see what the flint, what the wood chips look like. There you go. The wood chips are, are gone and we have quite a few. And if I just move these over they probably start to burn some more but but they, they disintegrated into ash. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the turkey out of this pan and I'm going to set it on a, on a um, cookie sheet and we're going to let, all, let, let the temperature, let the juices just all return back to, to their normal. Now the fun part. 
And you know what I didn't do that I typically always do? Is I put aluminum foil up underneath here that has handles so that I can lift the bird right out. But let's just see if I can do it this way. I'm not going to go far. Look at that. Fall off the bone. Wow. Okay. Let me go ahead and move this off the grill. We don't need it getting still cooking. Now, you have a couple of options. You can take this and you can make it into a gravy. We could uh, get rid of that. We could put some, make a roux, which is um, some flour and butter, and and then mix it all in here, and that'll make a, an incredible gravy uh, for your mashed potatoes or for on top of your turkey once you cut it up. So that's what you do with all this juice that's left over, or. You can also, once you cut cut the turkey, you can pour some onto uh, the meat, and that way it gives it even more flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and spoon the 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 apple and the onions out of the, the cavity here, and in um, a little while we'll, we'll cut some turkey and, and see how it tastes. So if you look here, how easy this just comes right off the bone, and there's the skin. And what we could do is take this knife, and look at the juices, oh yeah, zoom right in here. Look at the juices coming out. Look how juicy that looks. Wow. I don't know if you guys can see that up there, but the juices. Wow, look how juicy.
got my camera guides here. And they couldn't wait. They just wanted to start grabbing. Wow. So look. Well cooked, properly cooked, and the liquid, I'm going to try to squeeze this. Look at how much liquid's coming out. Okay? That is awesome. Now, I taste the pecan. I taste because I split the chips with the pecan and the hickory, the hickory is not overwhelming. So, five hours, not ten, five. One, two, three, four, five. On a griddle master griddle top. I told you I kept the temperatures right. I didn't try to cheat the system. We have all this, so that way we can make an incredible gravy. Like I was saying, we could take it and we could pour it out on top of the meat, but we don't need to do that. There's so much juice left in that turkey, and we didn't even get to the dark meat yet. So, um, wow, where do we go from here? Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoy this video. I hope you have a safe holiday with your family. And remember, if you can think it, you can do it on a griddle master griddle top. We have so many options. We can deep fry. We can bake. We can do pizza on the griddle top. We can do biscuits on the griddle top. We can smoke on the griddle top. So, uh, what a very versatile tool to have. And remember, Christmas is a coming. Uh, for the love of your life, go out and measure his grill and uh, order him a Griddle Master Griddle Top. He will thank you for it. All right, Griddle Master Joe, signing out. Sayonara. What's a boy? <laughs> or her grill. Or her grill. Come taste. I squeezed it, and the amount of juice, like a tablespoon of juice came out. Yes, ma'am. Not too strong? Woo, doggy.